Hello everyone and welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a great Thursday. It's actually pretty nice outside. <laughs> and since we're doing a Photoshop like class, I got a little cartoon here. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Alex Cooper. If you haven't been in one of my previous classes, I teach the computer classes at the Columbia County Library in Evans, Georgia, and also Harlem, Uchi Creek, and now the Grovetown Library. Yay, so very, very glad about our new library. And uh, very happy that you're here with me today. We're doing all our classes virtually, staying home, staying safe and stuff. So our libraries aren't doing any on-ground classes or anything. So please like and share uh, this video to let everybody know that we're still doing classes and stuff. So our little graphic here, because we're doing a, a advanced uh, photo editing today using GIMP. The reason we call this advanced photo editing is because our other classes that we worked on, we were using the Microsoft Photos uh, Windows 10 app. I know it's a big, big name there. And it allowed us to do a little bit of basic editing, uh, um, cropping, stuff like that. But we want to go beyond that using some filters and stuff. We want to be able to control a whole lot more and see what other features we can have. We also you talked about Google uh, photos, uploading our pictures and doing some basic editing there as well. But we want to do some more advanced editing and we also want to learn about our new topic, layers. So we've done this class many times before, but now we're adding layers to it. We'll talk about mask mode and all that kind of good stuff. So we got a little graphic here. Uh, doctor comes, brings the x-ray in and says, your x-ray showed a broken rib, but we fixed it in Photoshop. There we go. So I guess his, his leg has now been healed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about um, as everybody kind of comes into the classroom and everything. Welcome to class. Very glad you're here today on a wonderful Thursday. Uh, please post any questions that you have in the chat. This is one of the big things about coming to our classes when they're live. That means you can ask me questions and I can answer them live. Uh, one of the things about this is I'm actually going to be posting the handout in our chat so you can download it. But also I'll be posting the video, the, the excuse me, the photo pictures I'm going to be editing as well. So if you wanted to follow along, it's probably a good idea to have me like on a separate device a cell phone or something and then have um, GIMP right there in the computer in front of you so you can excuse me so you can follow along uh, as I do what I do as well uh, so the big question I always ask is how can I help okay I'm here to help how can I help let's talk about some of the other classes we had on Tuesday we had the photography basics class we talked about using our camera taking pictures with our camera some basic stuff about megapixels um, and also we had extra stuff on there where we talked about composition rule of thirds and taking better pictures with our cameras and our cell phones too on Wednesday we did a gadget help one of the things there is we had a, um, a whole bunch of topics that we talked about uh, free stuff that's available from the library like Acorn TV and also we talked about the new upcoming switch that we're going to have from RB Digital using our ebooks and audiobooks we're switching to Libby yay Libby and we're also going to be talking about that next Thursday as well because that's when our libraries do the big switch over from RB Digital for ebooks and audiobooks you can still get your magazines and sign up for Acorn TV magazines and your comics um, on through the RB Digital for now, and but everything else will switch over. And then we did photography fundamentals and cloud backup. This morning we did Chess 101, so that video is still up and available. It's a fantastic class, and of course this afternoon we're doing advanced photo editing and layers. This is the list of our classes that we've done throughout the month. All these videos are still up and available here on our YouTube channel. Next week, we're going to be doing uh, cord cutting basics for cord cutting. We'll talk about Peacock and how you can use the, um, uh, we'll be talking about some new stuff, cutting cable, antennas, all that stuff. And I'm very excited to say that the Peacock service from Comcast will now be available on Roku. So that's really good. And I'll also tell you how Comcast will send you a free um, um, cord cutting box so you can watch all that stuff. 
Uh, the other thing is what we'll be talking about is library resources, uh, creating videos and editing basics. And then October 1st, we're going to be doing uh, Raspberry Pi projects with me, Alex, live. And then October 1st, library resources and apps, including the new Libby audiobooks and ebooks app. We'll be talking about that. Our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Like I said, we're not doing any in-house programs right now. We're just kind of staying safe and everything. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our goal is if we get 100 subscribers on YouTube, then we get our own YouTube address. So please hit subscribe to this video. Don't forget you have to be logged into YouTube to ask me any questions on the video, um, the chat and everything. If you're looking for our YouTube channel, you can go to, you just search YouTube for GCHRL videos and it'll pull right up. Okay, I'll come back. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started here. Uh, of course, we're doing our advanced photo editing and I'm actually going to go ahead and post our handout. And if you want to go ahead and post a question, feel free. All right, so here is our handout, which I'm just going to be covering. And let me get the files set up real quick. Now I'll take just a second. <laughs> All right, so while that's uploading, I'll go ahead and get started and then I'll post it. It said it's going to take a minute or two to get there. So there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started here. Oh, hold on. So funny with the technology stuff. You think we'd all be experts on everything by now, but still live stuff. It's funny. Anything can happen in a live video. Okay, so welcome, welcome. Hey. Welcome, welcome to Advanced Photo Editing and Layers. Like I said, this is an updated class. Let's talk about what we're going to cover this afternoon. Part of this class used to be just our editing. We talked about some basic um, blemishes. Mostly it was to answer the question that people would have in the photography class. How can I get rid of blemishes? Fix old photos is what people were interested in. And now because we have a little bit extra time, we can actually switch our classes up and a little bit more to our classes. So our virtual scrapbooking is actually going to get its own class and we're going to be doing that next week. Okay. So let's talk about what we're going to cover today. We're going to be talking about our photo editing. Of course, we're going to be talking about GIMP, our free Photoshop alternative and that you go and I'll, I'll pull that up when it's time. We'll talk about resizing an image. You can do that in a lot of programs, but you may want to be very specific about what you want, what the dimensions are. Maybe there's a project, maybe there's a website, maybe there's some kind of upload profile picture or something like that. Uh, maybe you want to take a picture and have it put on a passport and you need certain dimensions. Well, that's when you do like a photo editing program. We'll talk about changing uh, or balance colors. Okay. We'll talk about using brushes, okay? We'll talk about using the blemish and repair tool. We'll talk about the healing tool. 
the clone tool, the blur and the stamp, uh, blur and the sharpening tool. And then we'll talk about layers, okay? Now I've tried to make this as, um, I won't say basic, because it's not basic, it's just we're not gonna be doing a really, really advanced projects. So I'm gonna show you how you can do this. Just a few things that you need to learn, about five to 10 steps, and then you can also do the same things that a lot of the, the major um, uh, Photoshop editors do just on a daily basis, okay? So we're gonna separate an object from its background, okay? When we're gonna selective colorization, that's when you take a picture, you ever seen a black and white picture, and then there's one thing in the picture that's in color, okay? We're gonna do that, and I'll show you how to do that, it'll be pretty fun. Now, believe it or not, once you do the selective colorization and figure out how to do that, we can do a lot of different pro, um, projects. And one of those is we're gonna fix someone's teeth, make their teeth whiter, and if we have time, we'll get into getting a group shot, merging the two group shots together, because once you learn how to basically do, we learn this one project right here and working with layers a little bit, you can do a ton of other projects, okay? And that's just working with the different layers. So we'll talk about other projects and we'll also talk about saving and exporting our files, okay? So let me go ahead and I'm gonna pull up, go to our next page here. We're gonna be using the free GIMP software from GIMP.org. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up. So if you want to follow along and download that, it's completely free. It's an open source program. And all you do is you just click here where it says download and then go right here to where it says download directly. And that's for Windows. Okay. If you're using a different operating system, just choose which one you want and download it there. Okay. So GIMP.com, downloads, click here where it says directly, okay, and then download it. The reason I mention that is because this one's on the left. This you have to have BitTorrent software. Just click here to download it directly from them. Okay, so let's go back here. GIMP is an image manipulation program, okay, which that stands for... Uh, <laughs> Uh, graphic Image Manipulation Program. There you go. Uh, it is a free Photoshop alternative. There are other ones, and some people prefer those. That's fine. This is the one that I've used a lot, long time, and it's actually recently updated, so that's a really, really big, um, uh, big plus in its book, I guess you'd say. So it looks similar to this. This is kind of a compressed view of that. I'll pull it up, and let's see if our photos are ready. All right, our photos are ready. And I'm gonna click to share. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the files we're gonna be working with. So go ahead and just download all those. It's not really a lot of them, I promise. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead back to our, our part here. Let's talk about our tools, okay? Let me get rid of that, because that's kind of in the way. Here we go. Better already. So basically our main area, this is kind of a squished view of this. It's squish, that's a big technical term, okay? So we have our one, our main tool area, contains a set of icon buttons used to selecting tools. You can add brush, uh, patterns, granite, activate image icons, use edit preferences, toolbars to enable or disable extra items, okay? And that's this area here. Then we have our number two, which is our tool options. So anytime you click on any of our tools here, down this area will actually show the options on it. We'll talk about our, we'll start off with our magnifying glass so we can zoom in and zoom out. Tool options docked below the main tool box is a tool options dialog showing options for the currently selected tool, in this case, 
the magnifying glass, which we'll talk about that in a minute. Where's number three? Number three is our image windows. Main, uh, many images can be opened at the same time. Before you can do anything useful in GIMP, you need to have at least one image open, okay? What about number four? Number four, okay? That's this area here. Oh, it's our scroll bar, scroll area. Scroll, an image can be, get, be bigger than the image window. Scroll bars appear, allowing you to pan across the image. So the big thing is using our magnifying glass to zoom in and zoom out, and then using our scroll bars to move the image up or down. Number five is our right toolbar. That's this area here. Uh, you love the pictures? <laughs> Very, very good. Welcome, welcome. Do it smiley face. <laughs> okay, so we got here, we're talking about our scroll bars here, and on the right, we have our right toolbar, the layers, channel, path, and it docks, and a whole bunch of other options here. So this is where we actually go and we deal with our layers, okay? Number six is our, has our undo history, brushes, patterns, all kinds of stuff. Right now it's actually set to show our brushes, which we'll talk about in a second. You click one of these after you click your brush tool here, click here, and that allows you to paint, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and start the program. Grab the wrong thing there. Okay, here we go. So here's our program. It's all loaded up. And I'm going to go ahead and disappear so you can have a better view. Yay. <laughs> Glad everybody's here today too. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's open up our first picture. So we hit File and we hit Open. Now you may have to, once you download those files, you may have to navigate uh, where that folder is. Mine is in a bit of a different place, uh, probably than yours, but it is called Class Photos, and once you get into there, here's our list of our photos and everything. Let's go ahead and let's open up what's known as the Lifeguard Hut, and hit Open. If it does ask you any questions like this, go ahead and just click where it says Convert and it'll pull it up. So why would it need to convert something? Just so that it, it makes it easier, transfers whatever the picture is to a certain style that GIMP can use, okay? So here's our picture. Let's go ahead, a very popular beach picture here. Let's go ahead and let's use our zoom to zoom in on our uh, picture. So what we need to do is go over here to our magnifying glass if we hover over any of these tools, it will pop up and let us know what it is, okay? Of course, we have our main menu that goes along up here. We'll, we'll just kind of, we won't really do an overview of that. We'll just kind of jump into there because we're learning specific things today, okay? So go ahead to the magnifying glass. If you hover over, it'll say zoom tool, and let's click that. Left click, and now remember I said when you choose a tool here, Below here will actually show the options for it. So we actually have two options. One that says zoom in and zoom out. So if I want to zoom in, I got to click zoom in. And you should see a nice little plus sign on my magnifying glass. And now I can click plus and zoom in on my picture. Now, if I zoom in too much, then all I have to do is go here to where it says zoom out. It'll change it to a minus sign, and then left click, and it'll zoom out, okay? Now, if I do zoom in too much, you'll see that our scroll bars are here on the right side, so we can actually scroll up and down, okay? And they have the little arrows too. And also, if we wanna scroll horizontally, 
there it is right there. So if you ever have an issue where you're going, where's my picture? Well, you may want, you may be zoomed in too much or you may be zoomed out too much because you can zoom out so much that it looks like a little dot, okay? So just hit the plus button and then just start clicking and it'll zoom in again, okay? And then just kind of move your, oh, the scroll wheel does work too, so you can scroll up and down. Okay, so that's kind of getting around our tools. Let's go ahead back to our handout. So the first thing we want to talk about is resizing our image. And again, mainly I'm covering these because these are the ones that in class most people have said in the past, you know, I really want to know how to, to um, resize an image because I need a certain uh, pixel by pixel um, width and height for a project. And I go, well, you can't do that with our main, you know, Windows stuff. You got to do it in, in like a, a editing program. So that's why we're doing this here. So let's go ahead and let's talk about resizing our image. Let's click image and then click where it says scale. Okay. So image and then find out where it says scale image. Okay. Now anything in the menu here, you'll, if you hover over it, it'll give you a little bit more information. Um, the help on here is pretty helpful to be honest. So if you do want more help, click help and then use the user manual and you can actually see some different concepts and stuff in there. Okay. But let's do image, scale image. This will pop up. Now if we look at the very bottom of our image, it actually tells us what the name of our file is, how big our file is. It also talks about our zoom level. And if we look at the very, very top, it already tells us what our pixel by and by is, okay? Width and height. So when we look here, we can actually tell that our picture is wider than it is tall, okay? So the width, of course, is 2048. The height is 1536, okay? Now, again, the big thing about this is if someone says, oh, well, I need you to send you, you to send me a picture and I need it to be a certain file size, uh, the height or whatever. So if I needed to, I could actually change this. I can click here and change it by uh, clicking in the number or I can do a minus sign. Now a big one is to make sure that this is locked. Okay. Um, by default, it's set for to be locked, but if it's not, then you'll actually shrink the size and you'll mess up and it'll look um, something like that. It'll look kind of wrong, okay? So you want to make sure this is locked. So when you do your resize, let's say we need our width to be 100 and, uh, uh, 1500 for some reason. All right, 1500 width, and it automatically changes the height as well. So if I hit scale, boom, it resized it. Now it's smaller. Then when I look at the top, it says 1500 by 11, um, 1125. Okay. Now at any time, if you see, want to undo any changes, Let's go up here and let's talk about our undo button. It's not located here. I do sometimes wish it was just kind of located in kind of a quicker area. But if you hit edit, undo will be right there. The undo button, it will give a little description of what it's going to undo, but you just have to click it. Remember, it goes back one step. If you do want a keyboard shortcut, an undo is control Z, which is quicker. Uh, it's really one of the only... Uh, keyboard shortcuts I actually remember uh, from using this program. Of course, copy paste is universal, but control Z is undo. Okay. So if I click undo, boom, it'll go back to the original size because the bigger it can be, the better. Now, the problem is you can, of course, scale a big picture to be smaller, but you can't really scale a small picture to be bigger because it'll be blurry. blurry. There's certain ways that you can try to sharpen it, but it will never be as good as a high resolution picture. Okay. 
Okay, so let's go ahead to our next part. Let's talk about our color balance, change or balance color. Let me zoom in a little bit here because I know not everybody. Here we go. I know not everybody is um, on a computer and some of you may be watching me on like a smaller device like a cell phone or something. All right, so let's talk about our color balance. Now this will come into big play later when we do our layers because sometimes we may want a different layer to have a different um, color balance to it. And this is one way we're gonna make our teeth very bright later in a very easy way, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click at the top where it says colors. And then let's go ahead and we're gonna try the auto settings to begin with and then we'll play around with it a little bit, okay? So let's go ahead and click colors and you'll see there's a whole bunch of different options here. We're gonna skip over all that for now. We're gonna to try to show that we have some auto options as well. This is similar to um, yesterday when we clicked, you know, the auto exposure or something in Google Photos or the, with the Windows app. Here's our equalizer, white balance, uh, contrast, let's see, color enhance. Go ahead and I'm gonna just play around with a few of these. And if I hover over it, it gives me a little bit of a description about what it is. So I'm gonna click equalize. Let's see what happens. Oh, wow, that looks really different, doesn't it? So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna click undo and try again. Color, auto, let's do the white balance. Ah, it gave it a little bit more of a shade, didn't it? So if I do edit, undo, now I will tell you this, there are folks that do Photoshop um, all through the day and they actually have software and they're actually scanners or they actually have certain specific monitors to make sure that the color is right because I could have the brightness turned up on my monitor and then I go to print and then it looks dark or, or vice versa, something like that. So do be aware if you make any drastic changes in here, you may want to um, either look in a kiosk or something before you print to see if it matches what you thought it was gonna look like, okay? Or just kind of be aware your monitor might be brighter or darker. All right, so let's do auto. Let's see what this one does. Let's see, and it gives a whole bunch of technical stuff on there, but let's just click it and see what happens. Okay, I said okay. <laughs> Didn't really look like ain't much happened on that one. So let's do color, auto. Let's go down to where it says color enhance. It says stretch color uh, chroma to cover maximum possible range keeping hue and lightness untouched. Ah, I kind of like that. It made the sky bluer, didn't it? Okay, I might actually keep that. Uh, now, if I want to see the difference, I can hit undo. And then I go, oh, I want to see, I want to redo it. So if I hit edit, and you'll see redo here, okay? Click redo, boom, it'll switch it back. Now, now's a good time to kind of point out the undo. Where is it? Do I have to, okay, hang on. I guess I have to do it here. So I do edit and I say undo history. Oh, okay. Is it over here? Interesting. Okay, so here's my undo history. It used to be over here. Anyway, so I've only done two things. This will actually, we can expand this later. Instead of just hitting undo, I can get a little bit of a thumbnail to see what changes I've made. But I'm going to keep that for now, okay? And if I click that, it'll go back to where it is. But it's right here. The If I hover, it should tell me. Yeah, undo history. Okay, so if I click color, we kind of mess around with all of that. Now let's kind of do some stuff by hand, okay? So basically any of these in this area, um, there's some other ones here. I won't, I won't talk about those right now. Uh, we'll talk about our filters here in a minute. But here's our color balance, color temperature, hues, 
exposure. Let's do color balance. This actually, you know, our colors are made up of three main colors, okay? And if I actually just click here, you'll see that it changes the color and kind of gives it an interesting effect. So technically with this, you should be able to change it to any color that you can kind of imagine or any color that's possible because this is our color spectrum, okay? And if I do all colors, mm. so it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Does it have any presets? No, you can make your own. Here's about shadows. Let's see, midtones, highlights. And I can hit reset at any time as well, or just reset down there. Okay, so I'm hit OK. And I might do undo because I was just playing around. All right, so let's go back to colors. Let's see color temperature this time. This actually can uh, just the warmth, I guess, that's because it says temperature. So let's say you wanted to make it look like it was more of a morning sunrise. So you drag it here, you'll see the sun, here comes the sun. The morning sunrise is looking more, that's too much. Right about there, kind of in the morning. And also messing with other parts here. Okay, I'm gonna do reset. And if I do color, let's go down here to our next section here. So I'm just trying to get that there's a lot more than just hitting a filter and saying like uh, make it black and white or just change the color. With this program, of course, we can go in and it gives us so many options to make it, you know, anything we want it to be. See, more color and less color. Yeah, okay. All right, so colors. Let's talk about our exposure. Now, this is a big one. This talks about your the level of exposure. A lot of folks will talk about this makes a darker shadows. Okay. That looks like it's like something white on the screen, so I don't like that too much. And this is our exposure level. Okay. So basically, if you really need to go in here and you say I think there's a picture that's too dark well there you go right there go to exposure and you can brighten it up or of course if it's too bright you can darken it as well so there's your exposure level okay all right so I'm going to cancel and I'll or brightness and contrast this is just flat out making it brighter or darker Changing our contrast a little bit. If you want a darker shadows, make it look a little bit more artsy kind of in a way. And that while there, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? All right, so now let's talk about, let's go ahead and talk about our filters, okay? So the filters allow us to do, whoop, filters allow us to do a lot with our pictures just by doing some clicking. And again, this might feel a little bit kind of like your cell phone. You can mess around with filters and stuff. Let's do filters. Here's blur. We get a whole bunch of different options. There's not really a preview of these. You have to kind of run it. Let's see. There's one uh, reducing noise. Later on, we'll mess around with the red eye removal. Okay. The speckle is if you think it has a bunch of noise on the image. There's distortions ones on here. There's, a, oh, excuse me, the enhancements one. The distortion ones are kind of fun. Kaleidoscope. Let's see if I can. These are kind of silly. There you go. <laughs> 
it kind of creates uh, some weird stuff. Here you go. <laughs> How about that? All right, so hit cancel. I'm gonna keep going here. The distortion one, lens distortion. I think we should see. Okay, I gotta mess around with the settings on that one to make that work a little bit. There's ripple, here's lights and shadows, lens flare. There you go. Where you want your lens flare to be? Lens flare. Kind of as you met, you can mess around with that, and make it kind of glow as well. Here's edge, noise, getting more specific about a picture, combine some stuff. Now let's go ahead and we'll, we'll kind of skip the other here. There's ones that you can uh, make some kind of animation, web stuff. Let's go ahead and let's go to the one that says artistic. So these are kind of the neat ones here. This is one that I play around with a lot. It'll say cartoon. Don't you like that? It looks kind of makes it look like it's um, you know, a comic book or something. I choose really strong. Oh, that's almost too strong. There you go. Changes the picture completely. And that's under filters, artistic. Now, another one that people ask is. Think no, nah, it's not the one I want. Other people ask is how can I make it look like it's a um, where is it? Hold on, there it is. Looks like it's an old painting in some way. So can you tell that it looks a little bit more like an old painting? If I see, I usually play around when I'm playing around with something. I usually do like the the extreme okay ah, so now our picture has kind of an old painting you know to it so you can't really read the text there so I'll hit undo so the artistics one it kind of does a little bit of what people say hey I want to be able to do stuff I want to be able to change it. There's even a Van Gogh uh, filter. Give that a second. It's loading here at the bottom. But it lets you mess around with the pictures and change them pretty quickly. All right, in a second, we're going to talk about our brushes and repairing an old photo. It's loading. It's loading. <laughs> I guess the strength on that wasn't high enough. Anyway, so I kind of like the old one a little bit better. So that's kind of dealing with our filters. Lots of different filters on there, lots of different options. Now that'll play a pivotal point later when we actually want to work with our layers and have the background do something um, odd, but we don't want our whole picture to look that way. So we're going to kind of mask, hint, hint, mask the part that we're interested in. Now I've got some detailed instructions here basically about how our brushes work, but I'm going to actually just show how they work in just a second. There are different brushes. You can install um, more new brushes if you want. Right now we only have a few on here. These are the brushes here on the right side. Okay, there's only a few here. Some of them operate in a different way. There's ordinary brushes that are just kind of like stamps. That's the best way to describe them. Stick them on, stick them in some paint. Stamp, 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 and you can draw with them as well. And then kind of do some calligraphy. Um, there's some silly ones on here, like a green pepper one, and then there's ones that actually the brush changes. 
depending on where it is and where it's going. You can actually create your own brushes. There's a lot of folks that one of the things you have to um, realize is Photoshop and GIMP as well. Sometimes it's kind of like a vessel where you just learn the basics, but if there's something specific you want, there's all these companies that either sell or there's lots of free stuff on the internet too. Free brushes that you can actually download, install onto um, GIMP or install into Photoshop, which gives you all these other features, even though the main, you're just like, well, I just know how to use the main Photoshop. Well, if you use these extra things, it gives you more features and more options. One of the neat things too is you can actually create your own brush as well. If you uh, select something, you can actually make it into a brush or like a stamping tool. So you can create your own very easily just by doing a selection and copying it, which we'll talk about that more in a little bit later. So the biggest thing about brushes is choosing the one that you want. Here's some examples of different brushes, okay? And just like you think about brushes of paint, it can do different graphs. So let me go ahead and I'll show that real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab a paintbrush, which is right here. Paintbrush is our main option. There are other options as well. Now they've gone to a menu system that I'm not a big fan of. This used to be a whole lot longer and you can go into the settings and change it to be more brushes on the screen um, excuse me, more tools on the screen, but this is the default now, so that's why I teach is teach by the default. So the, some of these I may have to right click to see more options, okay? So it does feel like it's kind of hidden. So if I click that, then I can actually go over here and choose a brush. I'm just gonna choose a circle right now. Now, how do I know what color my brush will be? Well, we actually know right here, it, they call it the foreground, and the background color, okay? Right now it's set to black. So I'm gonna left click this little square here. And then I can basically choose any color in the rainbow. You kind of scroll this up and down here. And if there's a color that you uh, like a lot that's already on here, I can click here where this eyedropper is. Let's say this yellow. And then I click that and it'll automatically load up that color and I hit okay, okay? So now, when I get my brush, I can actually start drawing. Oh, did I do something wrong? Hold on. My eyedropper, do it on our yellow. Well, what am I doing wrong? Hey. Okay, I'm probably in some wrong mode or something like that. But anyway, if I go here and I'll make it kind of yellowish, kind of matches, and I hit OK. There we go. So I can see that that's my color there. And I choose my paintbrush, and you'll see we'll just do kind of a line. Okay. One of the big things is when we choose our brush, want to make sure that you're in this mode here. Big thing is the size of the brush. So you see how that's at six right now. I can actually drag this to 30. And then when I do my brush, same brush, and I can make it monster bigger if I want to. It has a whole bunch of different settings here which we're not gonna get into, but just know size is really the main one uh, with our brushes. So I'm gonna drag it back down or I can click here. I think if I hit, uh, yeah, okay. So if I drag it back down here, we'll do about a 10, I think. Yeah. So let's play around. So I can actually choose some funny shapes. And then if I just left click, it's like a stamp. Or I can draw a line. Stamp, stamp, or a line. So you can kind of get the gist that you can lightly do something. Now, mostly what we're working with right now is just kind of the idea that this is like us just drawing um, on here. But in a little bit, we're gonna actually be using our brushes for selection. Now, not sure what that one is. 
And as you see, we just have a whole bunch of different ones on here. Ah, that kind of gives an interesting texture to something, doesn't it? Okay, so, and what is this one? This one, okay, so this one's kind of let, lets you write your name or something. I calligraphy. Everything kind of has a little bit of a texture to it. And that's really kind of how brushes work, okay? Now, some of these brushes are fancy brushes. This is one of that's fancy brush. It actually will change. And there's a silly one. I don't know why. And this is one that actually comes with uh, them. And you'll see that when I click, it's our, whoop, let me zoom out here. You'll see that it's our mascot. And every time I click, he'll actually have something different coming out his mouth. So they can get a little bit more uh, different than just the basic on here, or they'll turn or jitter, but I won't go into that today. Just realize that you can change all that with these settings here, okay? Flying a jitter. Okay, so that's kind of using our brushes. You pretty much just select it. The main one we're gonna use is this one right here that's just kind of a line, and we'll change its size later, okay? So let's go back to our handout. Talked about our brushes. Let's talk about using our healing and blemish tools. So let's go ahead back and I'm going to close this. I can click here to close. It'll say, do you want to change, change say nope. Now let's do file and open. Now we're back in our folder here. The one that we're going to do next is we're going to click the one that says wrinkles before, okay? So let's open wrinkles before. It may pop up and ask you uh, to convert. You say convert. All right. So here's our gentleman here. And if we zoom in, got to make sure it's on zoom. If we zoom in, we can see that he has some crow's feet, doesn't he? Right in this area. And if we scroll down here, he has a big mole on his face here. Well, he's decided he doesn't want any of those things. And some of those things, or we can't, uh, you know, live, <laughs> we have to either Photoshop it or live with it. And he's decided he doesn't want to do that. And if you've ever seen any magazine um, ever with the model or even uh, food or even, you know, furniture, trust me, it has been Photoshopped in some way or another. Okay. Any picture you've seen, it's been Photoshopped in some way or another. Now, the term Photoshop is basically the two tools that we're about to use. So you can do this. And like I said, I'm keeping this. This is not basic. This is just trying to make it very simple. Okay. So let's talk about our healing brush. Our heat, excuse me, our healing tool. Healing tool is close related to the clone tool, but it is smarter to remove small failures and images. A typical usage is the removal of wrinkles in photos. So let's use that. Let's go up here and we actually have to, uh, where is it on here? Yeah, we actually do have to click right. Now, like I said, they've added this or changed this to the, the newer version. Again, I'm teaching that way. So if you get here, you need to right click and it'll show clone and then healing. Now, if you do want to switch to the brush, you can actually just click H on your keyboard and it will change. To H see that or of course right click choose healing and you'll see that the brush changes from clone to healing okay now the big difference or the big part about this is we have to select the source hold down control on the keyboard and left click where we want we, we let we um, we hold down control and we left click our source to begin with where we want it to pull from. Now I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to get the heel tool. So I have this really big brush right now. I actually want it to be smaller. That's a little bit too big. I think I'll do about a 10. And I could tap in there as well. 10 should be pretty good. Yeah. 
So you should see kind of a dotted uh, outline and right now you should see like a little um, circle X and if we look at the very very bottom this area here it'll say control click to select a new heel source. So we're going to choose something that's similar to what we're going to work on. Right now I'm going to try to get rid of this area so I'm just going to go a little bit below her, hold down the control, left click, and then when I move away, you'll see that the, the dotted circle is still there. So when I get here and I click, it's actually pulling from that area and kind of blending it together. Okay. Now the big thing is to keep moving your source. So I'm going to hit control and I'm going to put it a little bit below here and it blends it together a little bit. Okay. Gonna move it here. Gonna move it here. And get rid of this. And let's see, I want to get rid of that, so I'll move it there. And move it here a little bit. And maybe here. All right, now let's work on underneath his eyes a little bit. So I'm going to left click here, or I'm going to control, left click. Try to focus on where your color is coming from. And if you do kind of br do brush strokes, like what I'm doing, it the source will move with you. Okay. Kind of like that. It's working fairly well. I'm not getting exactly the way I want it. Oop. Might be a little bit too much of a color difference there. Okay, I think that works pretty good. All right, let's try to get on the edge here. Blend those things together. Well, if you make a mistake, just do edit, undo. Depends on how much you clicked. Not the best, but I'm just doing it very quickly. So let's go ahead and let's zoom out here. And let's see if we have a little bit of a difference. Now I can see where I could have worked a little bit better on that. But look, our crow's feet are gone. And I like this because I can actually compare the two. A little bit too smooth. Okay. A little bit too smooth. But I'm going to show you the other brush. And using the other brush in this one, it'll actually make it look a little bit better. So we got rid of the underneath the eyes, didn't we? Okay, we got rid of the crow's feet. And if you wanted to get rid of, let's say, some of the, let's see, lines up here. We change our source. Oh, want our source to be here, sorry. Change your source and then just kind of draw across and it kind of erases it, okay? Okay, now let's zoom out. 
But what'd you think? Lines on his forehead have disappeared. Now, let's go down and let's look at the mole and we're gonna learn more about our other brush. Let's zoom in on the mole a lot, okay? Our other br brush is called the clone tool, okay? Clone tool uses the current brush to copy from an image or pattern. It has been, it has many uses. One of the most important is to repair problems uh, areas in digital photos by painting over them by pixel data from other areas. So the clone, cl the heel brush kind of smooths your source and where you're painting together, the clone tool copies your source and puts it on top of the other. So again, we're going to choose our, we're going to change to our, we have to right click here and change it to clone, or you can hit C on your keyboard. You'll see our brush right here. It does not have a source yet. And since that's in this area, the reason is this is because we don't want it to blend with this. We want this to be completely gone. We want to take part of this image here and put it over on this area and absolutely erase that because if we have it blend, it may not look right. Okay. So I'm going to hover here, hold down the control key, click, and again, you'll see that right there. And as I move, it actually is not blending, it's copying. And guess what? The mole is absolutely disappeared because that the part of that image is, is gone, okay? You didn't, you didn't blend it together. It has been completely erased from his face, okay? Now, the only problem with that is if there's like a little bit of a different tone or something someplace else, it may look odd, okay? Like, do you see how that's a little bit of a different color? So if we do undo, and instead we do use the heal tool, should see how that kind of blends it together a little bit better, okay? See, because we needed a blend there. But the, with the mole, we needed to completely remove it. Okay, so what you think? All right, usually in class, I have some people go, man, I wish I could just do this to my face permanently. But why wouldn't you, if you were a celebrity, famous person, politician, or anything like that, why wouldn't you have them um, do like a little bit of Photoshop on your picture? I don't know. You saw how easy that was. And if someone spent a little bit more time on it, it would look even better. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, repairing an old photo. So let's go ahead and let's open our photo. So do file and let's do open. And the picture that we want is the one called Cracks Before. Uh, these are all stock photos that I've gotten from a tutorial magazine. Um, these are all free stock photos. And then if it asks you anything, okay, good, it didn't. So this is of a soldier somewhere. And I guess we'll pretend that this is um, somebody's granddaddy or something. They've asked us, hey, I know you do Photoshop. Can you work on this picture for me? Um, I want to present it to my grandmother or I'm, I want to present it to my mother or something like that. And I go, okay, well, I'm happy to help. So we look at our picture here. Let's zoom in. Let's kind of look around. And we have these creases on here. We also have a lot of damage on our picture here. One big thing to do is probably to go ahead and do color correction on here. So this is supposed to be a black and white picture, isn't it? If I go to color, let's see, um, let's try our auto. That makes it a little bit better with it's an actual black and white picture, not kind of yellowish. But let's go ahead and zoom in and we're going to continue using our brushes here. So if I get my clone tool, 
And I actually want my brush to be a little bit bigger because this is a bigger resolution picture. There you go, it's perfect. And I'm gonna start my source here. And I click here, I kind of go around in a circle. Boom, that's been completely removed, okay? The biggest problem with some of this stuff is that if you do start using the heel brush, is it will actually smear the white. Or if you do like here, it may actually make it in a dark area. So you may want to change your source a lot. See? Let's do here. All right, now let's go ahead and let's look at our big crease here. And then I'll show you about fixing this, okay? One problem is that this area is dark versus the light part, okay? So some of this we can actually get rid of, but it's still an issue because it has this light um, crease on here, doesn't it, okay? So if I actually go over, and I think the one on the right, the one on the right is kind of the easiest one to work on. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get the stamp tool. And I actually want to copy this and put it down here instead. Okay. Now I'm actually going to line up. Well, no, I'm going to do it just right here. Your source. I'm going to make it up a little bit higher. Source. Get it here and then kind of move it around a little bit. And that will get rid of our main, the white line that's there. Whoop. Let me start here, because I'm going to actually put it right on the line, my source. And get right here to the end. There you go. If I want to get a little bit below here, I can do that here. And look, it's gone. Now, another thing is having a bad crease. So I'll zoom out a little bit here. Having a bad crease or where it's all cracked and everything. We, we know this is an old photo, but we don't want it to look like it's been damaged too much. So I'm going to use my stamp tool. I'm going to get right here, and then I'm actually going to go up and to the right. And even though we have a little bit of a damage here, it's okay. So I'm going to line up here, and I'm going to line up right on the line. And then when I draw, oh, I messed up. That's funny. All right, so, whoop, did I do, did I do the bottom? No, I sure did. So let me pull that back up. There we go. All right, so we'll go back to my tools. Now if I get it right here, and then get right about, I think I'll move this down a little bit. Whoop, did not mean to click there. Get right on the line. There we go. So we go across, look at that, it actually lines up pretty well, doesn't it? Okay, now some of this you may have to blend a little bit, but do you see how clear that is? How easy that is? The only thing that, that you may need is some time to be able to work on your project, okay? pretty good especially since this is a good um, high resolution picture too so we fixed that fix that we basically fixed the crease and again whoop what would I do I 
do the extreme zoom in. All right, so if I get my stamp tool, have it lined up. Look at that. See? All right, so can you repair a picture? Absolutely you can. Just kind of get used to the two, the two brushes that we talked about, the clone stamp and the rest of them. And all it does is take time and you can do it. So we've repaired this whole area here. It had some blemishes and we repaired the um, border as well. Okay. So just a little bit of time and you can do that too. All right. So let's go ahead and let's talk about our next part. Let's, let's open up and we're just going to do a, a tool type. We're going to uh, use our blur tool and then we'll talk about our smudge tool a little bit. So I'm going to open up. Our next picture we want is, where is it? Where is she? There it is, field. All right, so field, if it asks you a question, just say convert. So here's a girl in the field here. Big question that people will say, hey, I took a picture. It doesn't look very, um, it didn't have the depth of field like I wanted because I wanted the background to be blurry. Now, our goal is to kind of make this area blurry, okay? We can do that very easily by hand. And then a little bit later when we do our colorization, you'll see, and we do our teeth, there's another way to do something as well. But trying to start off with us just being simple using our tools. So if I go up here and I get my, where is it? Oh, it's where the finger is. Right click the finger and go to where it says blur sharpen. Okay. Now I need to make my um, pretty big. Okay, make the, the brush pretty big. We're still using our main brush right there. May want to switch it to the harder brush. Okay. So, all right, and just kind of get to work. So my goal is to kind of make the trees look more blurry. Okay. So just kind of paint in circles here. Try not to get the girl's hand in there anyway. Just kind of move back and forth. You'd be surprised how many of the people say, hey, how do I do that? And goes, well, you really have to do an editing program. There's some apps in uh, on the iPhone that try to Kind of do it automatically, and there are ways that you could do it with a smaller object, of course. All right, what do you think about that? Okay, so if I kind of scroll to the right a little bit, can you tell this is in focus more? This is out of focus. Is this in focus more? And that's out of focus. If you keep going, you can make it blurrier and blurrier and blurrier. Okay, if you wanted to, you could even make this 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 area here more blurry. If you really want to focus more on her, let her stick out a little bit. There you go. So that's just using the blur tool. Choose blur. You can choose the, the, the hardness of it and all that. Is it 100% right now? And choose a brush too. Now with all these tools I've been talking about, you can actually choose different brushes and that'll give you different effects and different texture as well. All right, now the smudge tool, I'll kind of briefly show the smudge tool just because it's there. Also, you can use the opposite of that. You can sharpen as well. Uh, that's the uh, Blur Sharpen tool. 
So if I go to the smudge tool, and it's kind of big right now, and I may want to feather it. Okay, I'll try this. So kind of the idea is, let's say someone says, hey, uh, the waist size too big or the arms too big, and you'll see uh, celebrities will sometimes get caught doing this, which is kind of funny. But if I do it right, The smudge tool just kind of grabs stuff and it makes it kind of like it's an old painting, okay? So it just kind of smooths it a little bit. With practice, I could work this out, but right now it looks a little bad. But that's just kind of the smudge tool. <laughs> I think I've got it too much. Yeah, okay. So we won't have time to really fix that, I guess you'd say. But you could then maybe even do the stamp tool. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, that's a little, I've, I've, I've gone a little too far on that one. Okay, so using the smudge tool and then using the clone stamp a little bit, um, there you go. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go to our next part here. Let's talk about our layers. Yay! Let's talk about layers. So what exactly are layers? Okay, so right now you could say we've been working with one layer or just one sheet of paper. A layer basically is kind of like, have you ever been in art class and you cut out certain parts of piece of paper to kind of see through or to be able to see uh, the next layer like an onion, okay? So if I draw on this part and then I have another layer and I draw on this part independently and this part, this next layer, I put GIMP on it. The next layer, I put a picture of the book on it or something. And the next layer, I have the picture when I look from above it, it's all kind of mixed together, okay? But the biggest thing about this is, um, this really is not only allows us to do some fun stuff here in a bit, but it also allows us to go back and make changes very easily, okay? Instead of having to do undo, 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 or save a bunch, I can actually just very quickly jump to that layer, move whatever it is around, change it, or I can actually tell that layer to have certain um, uh, they, what do they call it? T -t -t certain modes on it as well. So the layers can each have their own different mode and click that. Or let's say I see the cat here. I am the cat layer. I could actually brighten it, change the color, do a different filter on it, and it won't affect everything else. And only that is what changed. Okay. So instead of having to work, worry about some kind of um, selection or whatever. So the background layer is really the big one, okay? Um, a big thing to know is if you are if you have a picture and you're trying to cut it out, which we're about to do in a minute, and you um, select something, you delete it, and you see no transparency, which is what you want, then you need to add an alpha channel transparency, which I want to point that out too. When you add a new layer, it automatically makes it have a transparency. Whoop. Yep, gotta make sure stuff's spelled right. It'll automatically have a transparency layer to it and you can also ch choose the 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 visibility uh, so if you want something to be lighter or darker or whatever um, on the different layers and it'll affect what's below it okay also we'll deal with di additional layer mask in addition to the alpha channel there is another way to control the transparency of a layer by adding a layer mask which is an is an extra grayscale drawable associated with the layer. A layer does not have a layer mask by default. It must be added specifically. Layer masks and how to work with them are described much, much more 
into the layer mask section. So I do have that included as well. Uh, layer modes, okay, it has 21 different modes and we can choose one of these layers that have a bunch of attributes and it doesn't affect anything else, okay? So let's go ahead and let's start off um, with uh, separating object from its background, okay? There are several ways that we can do that and I'll also show you how you can get more specific with that um, using um, the quick mask. Watch, I'll show that. The quick mask, there you go. So basically you have an object. Sometimes you need to separate the subject uh, from original from the background. We're actually going to use our, our guide there because he has a pretty easy background to get rid of. May have the subject flat color, keep the background transparent so you can use an existing background or any other. You just want to make a changes to it. When we make a selection, you'll see the so-called little marching ants uh, dots a lot uh, around. Then if you actually hit delete, that will remove the background um, or you can actually fill it in with a different color or pattern. There's, all, there's a few different selection tools. There's the free tool selection, okay? Allows you to draw a border using either freehand or straight lines, okay? The intelligent scissor selection tool lets you select a freehand border and use edge recognition algorithms to better fit the border around the object. Use this when the subject is com complex but distinct enough against the background. The foreground select tool lets you mark an area as foreground or background and refines the selection automatically. Once we have our, select, our subject, the big thing to do is to do invert, so then it's selecting the background and then we can do a lot with it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it with a color, just a, just a background color. The way we do that is we do the opposite. We do that invert thing. We use our paint bucket tool, choose a color, click it, and it'll fill in wherever the, uh, the selection is because it's only gonna affect what the selection is. And then, we're going to delete, then, then we will undo that and we'll actually make an add alpha channel and make it so it's um, transparent and we'll add, we'll import a new picture. Maybe we'll let our guy go to the beach, okay? So that's kind of our plan. All right, so let's switch back to our guy. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. And let's talk about ways to select him. So if I go to my magic tool, there's, there's a whole bunch up here. There's ones where you can um, do it by hand. Whoop, hold on. You can do free select, which is where you just kind of draw like a circle and that doesn't change. The scissor one uh, shapes using intelligent fitting, okay? The foreground select one uh, tries to make regions in the foreground, but I'm actually gonna be using the the magic one right now, the fuzzy select tool, okay? So I'm gonna click that, and if I get in here, I just left click, and you'll see it does a pretty good job. That's pretty close to what I want it to be. Now, because I've made a selection, I can actually go up here to the toolbar that says select, and we actually get a bunch of different options here. If our selection is not proper, we can make it a little bit more feathered, Okay, that worked good. Selection, feathered. Okay, that worked a lot better. You can sharpen, you can shrink. If you think your selection needs to be closer, so I'm gonna shrink it, and you'll see it gets a little bit closer to his neck. There we go. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We need to do, um, we have to do select and click invert. So invert, now it may look like nothing's happened, but now instead of him being selected, it's the background that has been selected. So when I do the grow, you'll actually see it gets a little bit closer to his neck, doesn't it? Now, it also has uh, some other things in there, but we won't go into that too much. The big thing is that now we, that we have our selection, we can actually choose, we can, we can do a few things here. So I'm gonna do um, the paint part. Because we have this selected, I haven't, I haven't jumped into the, to the um, 
layers yet. We still have this yellow. If I just grab a paintbrush, because we have something selected, watch this. You can paint just that specific part, okay? And if I do invert, now it's the background selected. You can draw it in by hand if you want to. We can get some of these fancy, you know, to add a little texture in there. Let's see this one here. Kind of adds a little bit of dots going on. Let's see. Here's this one. Mm. A little more texture in there. That one I really like. It looks like um, like bubbles or something. You know? You like that? Okay. So, have we done magic already? I hope so. So, I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to go back all the way back to before I started drawing. And it should be this one. Okay, now if I get my paint bucket and I go back to my paint fill, if I click here, then it fills in the background. So that's just a quick, easy way to do that. Now, someone says, okay, well, you got all this other junk in here. How do I get rid of that? Okay, well, we're gonna talk about that uh, a little bit more when we talk about our um, adding a mass to our layer. So let's go ahead and I actually don't want to, to fill it in. This was talking about our fill in bucket. Okay. I actually want to uh, delete it. Okay. So what I want to do is I actually want to add and make it transparent. So I do layer transparency, add alpha channel, okay? Now, once I hit, because this is my selection, okay? And if I do, 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 do all right. So if I actually hit delete on the keyboard, it actually will delete the background completely. Now, what do these squares mean? This means it's now transparent, okay? So I'm actually going to add a new layer. So I'm going to click File, and I have, I have this listed here. Import a picture to a new layer by clicking File and Open Layer. File, Open as Layer, and we're going to send him to the beach. So let's open up our Lifeguard Hut. And if it says anything, just say Convert. All right, now, now we're starting to already understand how layers work. So when we imported our picture of our lifeguard, it's on top. So how do I get the, because I know there's a transparency there, how do I get the um, guy to be on top? All I do is I drag him to the top. And then boom, now because we have that transparency layer, now we have more than one layer, okay? Now watch this. We can actually, uh, which, which tool do I want? If we do scale, oh, hang on, hang on, hold on, what do I want? Mm. No, that's not what I want. I want. Mm -hmm. That's a storage. I'll do what I want. Well, I'm not sure. Anyway, will that do it? No, that won't do what I want either. Okay, I wanted to resize him. Just give me a second here. I'm trying to, trying to remember where I go to do that. Okay, so shrink, fit, distort. Where is it? Our layer, round, scale. Is that it? No, it's not what I want. Mm 
scale, perspective, 3D transform is kind of interesting. It does some weird stuff. Oh, is that what I got going on? No. Oh, I actually want to get rid. Oh, we need to get rid of our selection. So select, select none. And then when we do, the, there we go. There we go. There he goes. Okay. So now he's over here. And I want to resize him. There we go. All right, now. Eh, is that about the right scale, you think? It's okay if it cuts off a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to say scale. There we go. Okay, now, another thing to do is that you can actually turn layers on and off with our little eye side here, okay? You see that? Okay, so let's go ahead and let's talk about our next part. Oh, we're about to we're about to do that. So give me a second here. So not only can we, because these things are separate, I can actually take a paintbrush and let's say I choose the lifeguard, or I'll choose him, take a paintbrush, and when I paint, it actually would be only on this layer. Do you see? If I turn this layer off, it's not on that layer at all. And if I do undo here, if I click the lifeguard one, and then I paint, it doesn't affect him at all. It only affect, affects that layer, okay? So that's really a big benefit of having the layers. So if I look and I say, you know, this layer in the background isn't bright enough, or I'll do him, I'll do him, I'll click him. And I go, you know what? I think that this layer, the color balance is wrong. I'll go to the, um, where is it? Brightness and contrast. And I go, oh, he's too dark. He needs to be brighter at the beach. Then it only affects him because of that one layer, okay? Or it needs to be darker. Maybe he's in the shade or something like that. Look, he's at the beach. Everybody believes, oh, you're welcome, welcome. So now it's a little brighter. It looks like he's at the beach. So the layers, the big thing about layers is to have it so that you can edit them separately. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and we're going to talk about a selective colorization. And then hopefully we'll have time to work on a teeth. There's a few other projects to mess around with too. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to do our colorization, okay? And we're actually gonna do, it's a really neat picture on here, and it's the one of the girl, it's, when is it? There it is, it's called Smooth Skin. So let's open that, and if it asks you anything, just say Convert. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually make all of this black and white and we're going to make the the soda or the icy that she's drinking in color and her lips in color and that's all we're going to do okay so the interesting part is what you're about to learn will allow you to do so many things okay and i've tried to make this as simple um, as possible this is advanced techniques but i've tried to make it as simple as possible because if there's only certain things that you really want to um, edit or change. So imagine many, many layers, you know, we kind of played around with, you know, only two here, okay? And they also have different modes as well where it says mode here. If I click here, then there's all these other settings I can instantly change. Um, and the cool part about it is it hasn't actually affected the original picture behind him, okay? So that's what the, the sheet talked about modes. So what we want to do is we're actually going to, and it's just like if I had two sheets of paper, if I had two sheets of paper and I wanted one sheet um, to be, a, it's, so I got two pictures here and I have one picture that's black and white and I have one picture in color. 
So if I actually took the black and white picture and put it on top and I took a pair of scissors and I actually cut out, let's say the drink here and then laid the black and white on top of the color one, then the color would come through, right? That's flat out what we're about to do, okay? So let me zoom in here. And the way we do this is, go back to our handout. The big thing is I open my photo. I want it to make a copy of the picture. I want it to duplicate the layer, okay? So I go, I select here and there's an icon here right here that says duplicate layer, create a duplicate for this layer. I click there. Now we actually now have two layers and one's called copy, okay? Remember the one on top is the one that you see. Of course, of course if, I, if I, they're the exact same, so if I turn them on and off, you'll see they're the exact same right now. Now, what we're gonna do is, and this is just like if you had two pictures, we're actually going to go to the layer that's going to be in the back and we're going to tell it to desaturate, meaning remove all the color and only make it black and white, okay? So we want to do colors, desaturate, and then we have to click again that says desaturate, okay? So let's choose the one in the back. Make sure we not have the one on top, but the one in the back. No, sorry, the one on top, we want to do that too. So, um, no, 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 blah, but here we want to do the one in the back and we go up here to colors and if you want to turn uh, this one, the, the one that's on top off, so colors, uh, where's my, what is it? It's colors to saturate, okay. Colors, desaturate and then click desaturate again you'll see it just makes it black and white, okay? Now remember all the filters that we messed with? You can do all, stuff like this, the same thing with all these filters, and then kind of make it a push through, which we're about to do. So if I turn on the top layer, which is our colored layer, okay? On, off, on, off. And then if I go to this part, I'm actually gonna tell it to make what's known as a layer mask, okay? add layer mask. What the layer mask is going to do is only, it basically blocks out the top picture and only what I paint uh, black, okay, only what I paint black will actually be seen uh, through the paper, okay. So I know that sounds complicated, but literally it's like two clicks. And since we covered paint brushes, it should be very easy to understand. I click the top one to make sure I have it selected and basically it's this button down here. If I hover over it, it'll say add a mask that allows non-destructive editing of transparency. It's just adding a layer mask. I click that, it'll pop up and say what type do you want and I have that in the handout describing the other types. We just want the default which is white. I hit add. And now we actually see it looks like a little white square right here, okay? It hasn't affected anything yet, okay? Now what we want to do is we want to, oh shoot, I've actually done that backwards. Excuse me. I was right to begin with, sorry. I need the black and white to be on top, I'm sorry. And then I go to the black and white and I say add layer, um, add mask. I was actually right to begin with. So now, now the black and white has what this white sheet right here. And if I paint anything on here black, the bottom layer is going to shine through. Okay. So if we go to our picture here, so in our example here, someone's taking a band picture and they actually paint with black and it just goes through and you can see the little boy right there. Okay. So let's do that together. And I'm gonna, no, I don't need to zoom in. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Okay. So I take my paintbrush and then I have to make sure that it's gonna be drawing black. So I click here and all I gotta do is mess around with my colors. Where's my colors here? And I drag it all the way down to make sure it says 000 on everything. 
okay? And now I have black. Now, watch this, wherever I draw, it's gonna bring the color back because it's whatever I draw black, even though I don't see black, it's gonna be transparent. So I'm gonna do undo. And you see my paintbrush is a little big, so I'm gonna make it smaller. Okay. And then, that's all I gotta do. It's just paint, paint, paint. I'm gonna zoom in. Maybe that's a little too much. Take my paintbrush. I think I might make it a little harsher because I want this to be harsher. Whoop. That's fine. All right, so wherever I'm drawing, now remember I can use any of the paintbrushes up there. Now if you actually make a mistake and you paint too much, the cool part about it is you can actually switch and paint white and that actually gets adds to the it adds uh, the layer mask back. Okay? So it makes this this really easy fixable thing because I'm painting black even though I don't see it. So if I go too far, all I got to do is go up and click white. And there's some people, of course, that their job is they actually have those nice uh, tablets that they do this with instead of just a mouse. But I can get a lot done with the mouse. Now, again, if you want to give it some kind of pattern, then you choose a different brush. I need this to be a little smaller. I really like this example because it's a, the blue is really bright. This is a little bit, you can use selection to do stuff like this, but I don't like that because if I make a mistake, it gets really difficult. So a lot of the time, and I'm gonna show you how to do it in a minute, how to actually turn the selection. I'm running close on time, but I will finish up probably two projects here, or at least get you started. So. Mm -hmm. And if I do too much, again, just switch to painting white, and then I can edge that out. And then we're going to get her lips. This looks like a Coca-Cola commercial or something like that to me. Now remember, I'm not painting anything. I'm just letting the color come through. All right, I'm done. So if I do my zoom out... You like that? <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. Okay. 
You like that? Okay, so since we know how to do this now, there is a ton of things that we can do. Our next project is we're going to whiten somebody's teeth, okay? And it will not take long. So I'm going to do File, Open, and it's one that says Improved Teeth and I. Let me ask you something. So she, this, let's say this is a friend. She's asked us to take this picture and she wanted her teeth to be whiter than before. So basically, we're actually going to be doing the exact same thing. We go down here, we say duplicate layer, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to choose the top one and tell it to create, add a mask. We want to make sure it's white. Now the cool part about this is I'm going to get my paintbrush and it may be a little bit difficult for us to see exactly what we're doing, okay? So if I actually click down here, this toggles the mask on and off. So when I paint, I can actually see what I'm doing, okay? So our goal here is we're going to paint her teeth. And you go, oh, you're going to paint her teeth white. No, we're going to paint her teeth so it's transparent. And then we're actually going to change the background to brighten the entire picture in the background and that's how we're going to do it. This is how also you can do different colors. There's another thing I was going to do with the banana fruit picture that's on there. So we're going to grab this. And I want to get something a little smaller. It's a little too big. And I think I want to get, there we go. Oh, too big. Let's see. Okay. I think about a nine looks good. Whoop. Okay, there's a different way to do this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this and then click here so that we're kind of doing the same thing because that's a different, see this is a different way to select. I don't want to select. That's a different technique. Anyway, so I want to paint black and because I've turned off that, you'll actually start to see that it turns invisible here. Okay. So I'm painting black using the, the quick mask and it's like I'm erasing her teeth. Just want the teeth because if anything else shines through it may be, may look odd. Okay, now we click here, our teeth will come back. Boom, they look the same, don't they? They look the exact same. Because remember, that picture is actually back there. Okay. All right, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to select this picture. And uh, what's going to happen is, I'll, I'll show you after we do this. So I'm going to select this picture, and then I'm going to go to Colors. Now remember we poked the hole in our top layer, our top yeah layer. So if I click colors and let's go to where it says brightness and contrast. And because we're going to be affecting the bottom layer, all we have to do is drag this and it will actually brighten her teeth. Is that too much? You think it's too much? Uh, uh, that might be a little too much. That's where we were before. And what about now? What y'all think about that? So if I hit OK and I zoom out, 
Do, do her, does her teeth look better? Okay. So if I make the, the bottom layer disappear, boom. See, it, it's, we've cut a hole through the layer. Now, if I make the top layer disappear, what does the bottom picture actually look like? Well, it actually looks like that. The way we actually made it look like her teeth are brighter is because we poked a hole in it and we've changed the picture underneath. And you don't have to get into some kind of painting or, or darkening or burning or blurring or anything like that. And if I didn't think this was enough, I could go back and change it. So when I put the, the top layer back, boom, there's her teeth, okay? So that's one way that you can whiten teeth and let's kind of play around with it to get my point you know, really pushed here. If I go to color or any kind of filter or blur or edge or the artistic, here I'll do the artistic uh, cartoon thing. So if I choose the bottom layer, artistic cartoon, oh my God, now if I make the top layer disappear, so that's what it did to the picture, but that's where it coming through like that. That's funny. So if I do undo, undo cartoon, and if you mess around with the the uh, co the color balance, you can actually change the color for teeth, anything you want. There's so many things that you can do with this. Anything that you want to really manipulate, there you go right there. Okay. All right, now, running close on time here, but I did want to cover... Uh, removing the red eye basically is a selection. Um, let's see, how can I make her? I don't know if I can do a good job on that one. But anyway, so basically what you do is you choose a picture. Okay, uh, we'll go back to our guy. So basically we choose a picture. And then they want you to select like their eye. Okay. Add more than one selection, you hold down can select. I mean, shift on your keyboard. And then if you go up to, I think it's filters. Let's see. Oh, hang on. I got to remember where it is. Let's see. Look at iris, blah, 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 blah. Show up from such green. Hold on a second, I gotta find it. <laughs> Is it under? Let's see. Anyway, it's on here somewhere. There it is. Red eye removal. Since you selected this, now his eyes aren't red but then you can mess around with the threshold to try to remove the red eye from his eyes. It basically just kind of makes them kind of grayish is kind of what it does, okay? So that's basically how you do that. You select, choose that, and then it has a built-in uh, threshold and you can change it and stuff. Kind of similar to the, the Photoshop one, um, but there you go right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's talk about saving. And then I'll play around with our last project. Going over time a bit, I'll talk about our last project here. So the big thing is people will say, hey, uh, I, I know I've heard that it's bad to resave um, pictures over and over because it can get make them more compressed and compress them. So I'm fearful of editing a picture, then resaving it, editing a picture, resaving again, editing, resaving, editing, resaving, and then eventually it may look worse. Well, one of the things that you can do is we actually save as project files. GIMP saves as XFC files. Photoshop saves as PSD files, okay? So basically what that means is a separate file. All, it remembers all the changes that you made and you keep that file because if you want to come back and make any edits again, so you're not, you're not resaving. And then all you do is when you have your finished project ready, you hit, exp, you hit file export as. 
that saves it as a JPEG file. You don't mess with that file again. You come back and you reopen the project file, make changes to it if you need to, and then hit export again and save it. So it's basically like the picture being saved one time, okay? Not over and over again. And I had a student that was really concerned about that. So you do file save, it'll say um, which project file you want to call. So if you want to save something as a JPEG file, all you do is you do file export as. There's many different file formats on there, ping um, and the rest of them as well. So that's basically how you do that. Now I wanted to go ahead and do our last part here. I was hoping I was going to get time to it. So we did our colorization and oh, I will throw out here too. Uh, so let's say you wanted to give someone a little bit of like um, make the background kind of kind of glowish or something. Uh, someone may may say, hey, can you take a make a picture and make it seem like I'm kind of glowing in the background or to affect the background in some way. I think the girl, I think we can do that. So we'll open the girl picture, click convert. We're still going to be using the same method, okay? So we have our girl. We're going to go here. We're going to click duplicate, okay? We're going to go up to our main one here. And again, we're going to go down here. We're going to click add mask. Yes, we want it to be white. I'm telling you, once you grasp this concept, you can do a lot of things with it, okay? So what I want to do is I want the background, and this is another one of those things where let's say you wanted to give it, you know, like a holy, a holy um, vibe or something. There's ones where they get little kids and then they make the background kind of blurry. So let's add a lot of uh, blur on this. Okay, that's not exactly what I wanted. I don't want to shape. I just want the whole thing to be blurry. Okay. So go to blur. Let's see. I don't think that did what I wanted to. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Lens blur maybe? Aha, that's exactly what I want. Okay, so we have this. We're going to use the same technique. We're going to turn on our first layer and then, well, excuse me, we're actually going to, do, we're going to, we're going to do it backwards. I'm sorry. So let, let me, let me, uh, hang on. So we're going to take the one that's blurry and put it on top. Okay. Now we're going to add a layer mask to that. Yes, white. And because our background looks normal, when we actually take our paintbrush, anytime we start painting black, and I need my brush to be bigger, do you know what's going to happen? Okay. So basically, we can actually paint her in to the picture. Remember, if you make a mistake, just switch it over to black. It's not perfect because I'm just kind of doing the example right now. But you could spend a little more time on this if you wanted to. Yeah, I'm not doing a great job, but you kind of get the, the idea here. So by using a layer mask, you can make anything in the background, see there's our original picture, shine through. See, we just cut that out. And if you switch it to white, then that undoes, you know, your drawing. It goes back, okay? Switch it back to black and finish. And you can choose any of these brushes up here. <laughs> I don't know if that's really going to 
work the way we think. There you go. So the tree kind of has an interesting uh, flavor to it and kind of giving something some a little bit of contract. So that's another way to do the same thing. So this method of just adding one layer works wonders. Now, we talked about save, and I'm actually going to talk about the perfect, let's see, which one is this? Let me make sure I have the right one. Yes, this is an idea of actually merging two pictures into one and making a better picture out of it. So we basically have, and I want to I want to add that as a, so I want to click import, open as a layer, the second picture, and the, I've included these as well. Convert, yes. So basically we have two pictures here of a family, and if there's some way that we could merge them together, okay, so this is one where they're all looking pretty good, this one not so much, okay? So let's see, which one do we want to work with? Okay, so if I cut him out, she's looking here, she's looking here too. So again, I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna click my layer mask, hit white, and then I'm gonna zoom in, and basically I'm getting my paintbrush, I'm gonna make it kinda about the same right size here, I need to be a little bit bigger. And remember, I'm painting black, and watch what we're gonna do. Ooh, something, somebody's disappearing. And again, it's just like poking a hole in a piece of paper. So all I am doing is I'm revealing the picture below it, okay? And if I line it up pretty fairly well here, Make sure he has an arm. Okay, so what do you think? <laughs> All right, it's pretty neat. So again, we've taken a picture and we merged those two together. Of course, I'd want to show the original one, but of course I've painted over it now. But anyway, if I, uh, let me see if I can, uh, can I mute, anyway. So you should be able to tell there's there's a big difference there than what we just did. And that's what we did. We just cut through the top layer and it showed the picture on the bottom through instead of him being blurry or anything like that. Okay. So again, with this process, you can do a lot. Also, if you wanted to do more than one layer, just remember you can do that, make it the transparencies. And that's kind of a big introduction to layers. Okay. All right, so we've actually come to the end of our class. I hope that you've learned a lot and had a lot of fun too. I've tried not to, I wanted this to be advanced editing, but I didn't want it to feel like it was so, you have to be have some uh, you know, degree in Photoshop programming or whatever. Just learning a few skills. And one thing that's really great about Photoshop or a GIMP software like this is a lot of the things you do can actually be project-based, okay? project base. So let's talk about all the things that we did. We edited this picture. We made this one blurred with our different layers. We made this one where we cleaned her teeth a little bit, made it look a little better. We did our colorization here with the blue drink going up with the red lipstick. This one we did by hand blurring. Okay. And this one was a photo. We repaired some of it here on the right side. And if you spend more time you could really use it too. The other thing is using the, um, the, the layer mask to actually set it up 
It's kind of like kind of like what I did with the family, where you're using filters to try to speckle the paper, but you're you're keeping him very sharp and very clear because you're letting you know a bottom layer of just the picture shine through. We also did this where our gentleman kind of went to the beach while we were here, didn't they? <laughs> so there we go. All right, so that finishes up our class for today. I've got some resources listed there in the handout. Of course, everything we covered there. And there's also tutorials from GIMP.com uh, as well. So that does it for this week. And next week, next week we'll be finishing up with our photo, um, excuse me, on uh, Tuesday, we're going to be finishing up with a photography printing and virtual scrapbooking. And then on Wednesday, we're going to be cutting the cord at 11 a.m. And then at 2.30, we're going to be finishing up our photography series by creating videos and editing basics while we're talking about our Microsoft uh, Photos app. But we use the video editor, a whole class. It's a, new, it's a newer class. It's about the fourth time, thir third time I've taught it. So it's a lot of fun. Also, on October 1st, we're going to be doing, in the morning at 11, Raspberry Pi Projects with Alex Live. Come join me. In the afternoon, we're going to be doing library resources and apps, including talking about the new Libby app for audiobooks and ebooks. Don't forget that our library is open with limited service and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call into library with questions Monday through Friday. 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So, did you learn something new? Oh, Dr. Emmy. Dr. Emmy says, great job. Enjoyed this session. Learned a lot of things I didn't know before. Fantastic. Thank you for coming. Okay, you guys have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye <laughs> for now. Stay safe. It's getting cool. Might be some camping times coming up, and uh, looking forward to October and all our fall and winter festivals and stuff like that. So have a great day. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>